गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स माई नेम इज ललित सोनी एंड यू आर वॉचिंग इन फोकस बाई दृष्टि आई एस इन दिस एपिसोड वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ ड्रोन और प्रिसाइजली स्पीकिंग इट इज इंडिया फर्स्ट सुसाइड ड्रोन सो बेसिकली द नेम ऑफ दिस ड्रोन इज नागास्त्र सो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर अनमेड एरियल वाइकल और यू ए वी दिस बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस बिकॉज दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम इंडिया हैज डेवलप्ड इट इंडिजिनियसली एंड इट हैज बीन सप्लाइड टू इंडियन आर्मी सो वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट वी विल सी वॉट आर द की फीचर्स एक्सेट्रा सो लेट्स स्टार्ट first we will see the outline so here you can see first we will start with the news article then we will move to the key features of nagastra 1 okay nagastra 1 because there is another project in the pipeline that is basically nagastra 2 we will talk about that as well then applications we will talk about where it will be used then we will talk about the strategic importance how important it is for us or you can say indian army otherwise also if we look at the terrorist activities uh, there are uh, you know which is happening in jammu and kashmir how well it can be used uh, you know to counter the terrorist attacks etc then way forward we will see what are the fu futures plan and then in the end we will have an mcq based on this discussion okay so let's start with the news article so recently indian army has received the first delivery of its uh, indigenously made suicide drones that is known as nagastra 1 okay and these are made in india they these are made by a company named solar industries in nagpur the unmanned aerial vehicles that is also known as uavs okay so name of this vehicle is nagastra 1 company has made that company's name is solar industries nagpur so company has got this uh, you can say order in april 2023 and they have actually defeated the competitors like uh, competitors from israel and poland and they have actually got this order from the indian army to build these uh, uavs okay then indian army has ordered 480 units and out of which 120 has been delivered by the company as of now okay now moving further we will see what are the key features of this nagastra unmanned aerial vehicle okay so uh, either you can call as drones or uavs these are same things okay so when we are talking about nagastra 1 it has a carrying capacity of 1 kg warhead okay or arsenal if we see so it will have a capacity to carry 1 kg of the warhead and that can be used to destroy a target okay second thing is precise strike if we talk about the precision of this particular equipment so we will see that it can target or it can go and hit the target in the accuracy within the 2 meters of that particular uh, point which where we are interested to uh, go for a strike okay so let's see if there is this particular point so within the radius of 2 meter it can target that particular area okay so that is about it and they are using gps technology uh this the global positioning system they are using this system to go for the precision and the accuracy then loitering capability when we are talking about the loitering capability so that is the capacity to hover around the target okay let's say this is your target the uh, drone will hover around it for like 60 minute it can hover around it for like 60 minutes till they get the proper opportunity and then they can hit okay so that capacity is nearly 60 minute here you can see it is also no, known as the loitering munition it can hover uh, over the target up to 60 minutes okay then coming to the next that is kamikaze mode there is this mode in this uh, particular equipment that is kamikaze mode that is to search for the target and then destroy it okay so it will search in the area because it is having a hovering capacity it will search the target then it will go and crash into it by which it will destroy the target okay now since the warhead or the arsenal is inside the drone the drone will go and hit the target and it will destroy itself as well as the target and that is why we are calling it as suicide drones okay so that is why these are called as suicide drones okay because they are basically uh, going for the searching of the target and they are crashing into it and then ultimately destroying it okay then weight and portability when we are talking about the weight of this particular drone that is basically 9 kg okay and portability you can say it can easily be you know moved by the ground forces when we are talking about the army uh, when the military movements are there there are ground forces and they can you know carry it with themselves and then utilize it okay so you can say that portability is good and weight is around 9 kg okay moving further there are other features like maximum altitude it can operate up to altitude of 4500 meters okay so that is one uh, fact which you have to remember then coming to the range when we talk about the range 30 km in the autonomous mode if you are on the auto mode if you have set the target and you have started it and it is on the auto mode it will travel up to 30 km then 
coming to the next part that is 15 kilometers when operated remotely okay if you are using a remote and you are operating it then 15 kilometer is the range for this okay then it has a electric propulsion system ensures that low acoustic signature or you can say low acoustic sound or you can say the sound of the motor which is carrying it or the engine which is carrying it that is very low because it is having an electric propulsion system not using any kind of fossil fuel these are electric propulsion system and because of which they have the low sound or low noise and because of which these are undetectable to a certain limit okay so here you can say making nearly undetectable at altitude over 200 meters okay coming to the surveillance part so since it is a drone there are obviously there are there will be cameras so they are fitted with the day and night cameras and they can be used for the surveillance okay so since it is having a hovering capacity of 60 minutes okay so for 60 minutes it can at least go for the surveillance okay then abort and recovery in case your mission is aborted so in that case there are certain you know provisions which are given over here it has unique features allowing it to abort reuse and recover via a parachute soft landing okay so there is a parachute which is fitted and ultimately that can go for the soft landing as well okay so this drone might not get destroyed because uh, you have awarded the mission so that is why and it is important for having a soft landing because it is carrying a warhead okay it is carrying some arsenal inside it if it is going for any kind of crash landing it will destroy or there will be a good impact over there okay then moving further that is related to the applications when we are talking about the Nagastra one, it is designed to target enemy target training camps, launch pads, infiltrators, significantly reducing risk to the soldiers. Since now these drones are remotely operated, so soldiers might not have to directly go for the encounters over there. So that is, you know, some kind of, uh, you can say, uh, uh, risk which has been avoided by using these drones, okay. Second is, it is particularly effective in the border operations, okay. So areas like LOC and LHC when we talk about there is a need of surveillance okay when we are talking about this issue which is happening in Jammu and Kashmir right now the south of Peer Panjal okay so areas of Peer Panjal which is facing some kind of uh, terrorist activity in the recent past last last three years we can say so in that area that is all because of the infiltration okay if you want to check the infiltration these drones can come handy okay there are if there are any kind of training camps or etc are there they can target them okay so that is one thing now coming to the next part here as we as i discussed that for the border operations and providing precise strike on the terrorist targets then drone technology has proved to be force multiplier in the military operations as evident from the application in various recent conflicts across the world we have seen that armenia azerbaijan syria strike on the oil fields in uh, Saudi Arabia and ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict. We have seen that in such conflicts they have used drone many a times. Even in uh, you know areas like uh, Red Sea, we have seen that drone attacks were there on the shipments, cargoes over there in the Red Sea by the Houthi rebels or otherwise by the pirates etc. So these drones are basically used over there and ultimately if the militaries are having it uh, with themselves, so it will increase their uh, own uh, you can say uh, capacity when we are talking about the combats okay so that is about the application now coming to the strategic significance so now if we see the deployment of the nagastra one drone underscores the indian army's emphasis on the modernizing its warfare capabilities okay so we are you know going for modernization in the arsenals we are going for the modernize modernization in the uh, you can say our capabilities when we are talking about the uh, warfare and the combats okay and here with the indigenous technology now this is significant because right now india is focusing on you can say developing its capacity by make make in india you must have heard that in the sectors like defense space etc india is trying to go and try to be self reliant and even you can say that export oriented okay we are trying to send you, we are trying to you know uh, send export uh, when we are talking about the defense and the space related activities okay so that is kind of and you can say we are trying to capitalize these markets okay these drones are poised to enhance army's operational efficiency particularly in counter terrorism and the border security operations for the survey uh, when we are talking about the such areas like border and the you know terrorist affected areas so we are saying that there can be uh, you know uh, enhancement in the efficiency of the military by using such equipments because of the surveillance because of the you know strike capabilities etc 
Then the development of such drones also highlights India's growing self-reliance in the defense technology aligning with the Make in India initiative as Nagastra 1 boasts more than 75% content is indigenous. Okay? So when we are talking about the you, uh, you can say whole project or you can say this particular equipment, 75% of the parts which has been used in that these are indigenously developed. Okay? So that is about strategic importance. When we are talking about the what lies in the future, so after Nagastra 1, we are planning for the Nagastra 2, okay, and that obviously that will be an enhanced model. So an upgraded version with range of 25 kilometers. Till now we are having this uh, 15 kilometer, you know, remotely assessed uh, range. We are targeting 25 kilometer in that. Then ability to hover for 90 minutes. Right now we have a ability of 60 minutes, okay. We are targeting 90 minutes and it will carry a warhead of 2.2 kilogram. Right now we are having 1 kg. So that is the plan for the future. Okay. So that is about Nagastra 1 as well as Nagastra 2. Okay. Now this is where we will, uh, you know, wrap this video. Uh, last part is your prelims related practice question. So on the basis of the discussion we have uh, done right now, this is this question. What is the primary function of Nagastra 1 drone transporting goods, surveillance and the reconnaissance and precision strike via GPS and communication uh, relay? Okay. So here you have to choose the most appropriate answer. And they are saying what is the primary function. Okay, so focus on that particular word. Okay, so you can attempt this question, answer in the comment box. With that, I would like to uh, wrap up this video over here. If you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe it. Have a nice day. Thank you. For more informative content, like, share, and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.